Hi, everybody. Thanks for joining us for the Q&A. Um, I am meeting most of these people for the first time, uh, but I'm very happy to do so. Uh, so I'm not the best person to introduce everyone. I know that this is Bianca Stone because I just saw a lot of her in the movie. Uh, and I know this is Nora Jacobson because she is a brilliant filmmaker and good friend. Tyler Gibbons. Tyler Gibbons. The composer. Composer. Yeah. And Chard Denured. And Chard Denured. Who we saw in the film, yes, and welcome. Also in the film. So, I, my main function will just be to ask some questions if nobody else has one. Uh, does anyone have a question? Someone must have a question. I can't see. Okay. Shout. Raise your hand and shout. Okay, well, then I'll ask a question. Oh, who's that? Okay, hang on. I'll just bring the mic to you. Hi, this isn't a question, but I just wanted to say that this movie gave me a whole new way of seeing how time doesn't proceed. You know, it, what you were able to do is telescope and collapse in a moment, and that old footage was just such a treasure that you found that, and the old pictures, of course, which were probably in the house. So that house is, you, know, you have to wonder, what, what's the meaning of time when you think about that house? Maybe Bianca can answer that. I could definitely answer the meaning of time. <laughs> well, I think it's a good metaphor for poetry, how poetry works, because time and poetry is really interesting. And I liked how Major Jackson touched upon that a little bit, too, how the poet can really reflect back um, in memory uh, with a different... Um, sense of how things are in the present moment um, and then really uh, explore the how memory works in general and how flawed it is and how much it depends upon how we think about it now and what it relates to and what's around us and um, I think it's a really good point because there was like a lot of time passing first of all in making the film itself um, you know, Nora started when Ruth was still alive, um, and we thought it would be like a, a thing that ended before she died. You know, we weren't like gonna like aware that it was gonna last past her death. Um, but plus, so to uh, just Ruth's whole life. I mean, it was like a whole century. So um, yeah, I think poetry is a good place to explore time, and then movies about poetry is an even better place to explore time, so. Who has another question? Nobody, okay, well I might, oh, you've got one behind me, Don. Um, uh, Nora, um, poems and films are different, right? Um, and there, there are some, but not very many, films about poems or films about poets. And I was just sort of wondering why you could be so crazy and wonderful as to make a film about poems. It's a good question, because I wasn't at all sure I could uh, or should, could or should. Because, yes, poetry is in the mind, is in words that then evoke images in the reader's mind or the listener's mind. So I didn't want to illustrate her poems in any way, and I really tried. I don't think I did. Uh, but fortunately, there was Bianca, who is a not just a poet, but a visual artist. She wrote she made a wonderful book called Poetry Comics, for example, so, and, which I'd seen. And so I thought that was one thing. I thought, well, uh, maybe I can ask Bianca to do some images for the film that wouldn't r r illustrate the poetry, but that would show parts of Ruth's life. And then the other thing was that we we knew about Sidney Walensky, and I can't remember if it was Chard or Bianca that told me about Sidney, but Sidney is this is the guy that you see in the film. He's sort of dour, 
but and curmudgeonly, but he's actually a really great guy, and he's a Hollywood editor. And he made that film called The Excuse, where you, and you saw some bits of it. From the, it's a 14-minute film. It's a very short film. But he had all this leftover footage, which he donated to me to use in the film. So that was amazing. So it, it was that, and then trying to figure out ways to use the photographs that were interesting. And then basically it was, it was Ruth's presence on camera, ultimately, that allowed me to think it would work. And it was Chard that introduced me to Ruth in the first place because he recognized that she was an amazing, had an amazing presence and charisma. And, um, and when I met her, I agreed. And that, and that really was the, only, was the main reason that I could do it because she, even in her older age, she could recite her poems by heart. And that makes such a difference than, you know, just reading. So that's, that's the answer. Yeah, yeah. Um, I'll speak through my mask, <laughs> my N95. Um, so uh, I know you, Nora, and um, I love all your films. This one was inspiring on an emotional level, which I think is what Ruth Stone is. Um, you know, she weathered those storms um, and, as you say, could recite her poetry. And that is a powerful thing to be with someone who can recite like that from memory. And as Jim said, the timelessness of it. But I noticed, I, 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 I wept a little. And I think that... Um, it's very personal what you did. So I, um, so I just want to say that um, uh, I think other people in the audience around me shed a few tears too. And that's, that's great tribute to Ruth Stone and, you know, art in general. Sorry about that. It was very emotional. It was very good. That's just a Thank comment. You. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Well, I, I have to say, I think it's... I think part of it is Tyler's amazing music, too, that yeah. weaving that in <laughs> really, uh, yeah, it, it, he, yeah, he's an amazing composer. And, um, and Lisa, where's Lisa? Is she here still? Lisa Piccarillo? You're there. So Lisa sang September Song, which, <laughs> yeah. It was beautiful. Just when we heard her rendition of September Song, we were like floored by it. So thank you, Lisa. So wonderful. I'm just happy to get involved Do you want to? I, I'd love to ask Tyler to talk a little bit about doing the music for the score, for the film. Uh, um, I'll just say that. Uh, well, first, I was so inspired to be working with everyone here on stage. Um, this is just such a beautiful piece, and, and Ruth is such an amazing artist. Um, and basically, my philosophy was that I wanted to, to provide a little bit of texture, but mostly just stay out of the way, <laughs> because there was so much happening between the poems, which which really do all the work, you know, and and then the amazing animation and and illustrations, um, it, they're just there needed to be music. But so often, oftentimes, I think directors are looking for music to to provide needed emotional movement or lift, and that wasn't the case here. I felt um, all of that was here. It was so emotional, and it and it was so creative every moment of it. Um, so, and, and then I have to say, too, that the main theme in the movie I, I just borrowed is the wrong word, I stole from Ruth. <laughs> you heard her singing at the end, and it's a beautiful melody, and it was, that was the very first thing I heard from this project, and I said, yeah, I'm, I'm in, and, and we should take that with permission and, and, and use it, and I, I basically just, did variations of that. So 
I'm almost not sure composer is the right word for me on this project, but, but just a, <laughs> a, a, a small addition. Thank you. I, I just want to uh, say that it was an amazing experience for me to watch um, Nora work on this film. She met Ruth in, I think, 2010, I, 2009, wow. So what, 20, um, 20 years ago. Uh, what, 12 years ago, right? Sorry. Yes, <laughs> I said 22, so it's, it's 12 years ago. I'd been doing interviews with some senior American poets, um, Robert Bly, Jack Gilbert, um, Lucille Clifton, and. Um, and then really wanted to do this uh, in interview with Ruth. And um, she, was, she was scared of anyone coming to her door. She was living by herself on Waybridge Avenue um, at the age of 92 or three, and she was nearly blind at the time. And um, she finally allowed me into her house there, and we talked for th three hours, and then soon after that, she moved up to Ripton to live with uh, Marcia, her daughter. Um, and we just, we just kept carrying on a conversation. Um, this was in, I guess, early 2009, and I said, somebody has to, <laughs> to make a movie of this woman's life. And uh, Ruth, I mean, Nora had just finished making the Vermont movie, I think, and I'd worked a little bit with her on that. And um, she came up and started filming Ruth at her dining room table, which is, you see quite often in, in the film. And it was just an amazing experience <laughs> to watch Nora fall in love with Ruth and, and fall in love with her poetry and fall in love with her life and then works so incredibly hard for the next 12 years um, with Bianca and with all the family and um, visiting the house over and over again. But I can't tell you how many revisions that she went through in, in making this movie until she felt like she got it right and then she said what Valerie said about all poems or poets writing poems, she, she just had to abandon it at a certain point uh, uh, because she could have gone on and on. Um, but I really do feel she captures the heart and soul of Ruth in this movie and it's really because of her labor of love and to watch her fall in love with Ruth's poetry and, and Ruth and the family was just uh, probably the most moving experience I've had as a writer and, and person. And I just, Nora, I just like to say that the, the, your love for Ruth's poetry is transmitted so effectively through the film. I mean, it really, you give someone who isn't familiar with her work such a beautiful introduction and with such, yeah, such profound depth well, and it, wisdom. There is a lot of poetry in it. I noticed yeah. that, yeah. yeah. Too much, do you think? No, just the right amount. That's what I'm saying. Okay. <laughs> all right. That's all I have. So the artifact may tell us, or we could anticipate the answer, but Nora, could you talk to us a little bit and share with us what your first meeting with Ruth was like, or what you remember your yes, it was interactions at, and takeaways? Yeah, well, not a lot really, because it's all, there's a, it's an amalgamation at this point, but I certainly, since I've lived with the footage and I've been editing the footage, for so long, I do remember very clearly, she wouldn't allow us to light her at all because she had her eyesight, I guess it was macular degeneration, or yeah. at least some people say it was that. I think I, it was that, yeah, it was definitely that. It was that, and so her eyes were very, very sensitive, and, and we were there the whole day, and the light kept changing, and I was, I do remember that, that it was just very challenging to shoot. Uh, but, I, I mean, it was wonderful. And then going back to Phoebe's house with the, the two sisters and, uh, let's see, what, oh, and then Ruth's birthday um, was amazing. And then meeting the whole family. Oh, um, Don had actually asked about the visual, you know, what sort of gave me the courage to make a film about a poet. The other thing was finding out that Bianca and Ben were renovating the house. And as a filmmaker, I'm very interested in process, okay. always doing th people doing things. And so I thought that the renovation of the house 
was not only kind of mechanically a, a useful element to include, uh, but also very fitting in terms of what it meant in terms of Ruth's life. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, leg is it her legacy? We had this whole little discussion about whether it, <laughs> whether it was her legacy or not. And then, yeah, decided not to use the word legacy right. for various reasons. It's but back to um, time. What? It's back to time and eternity. Yeah. Yeah, I, and I think it's clear, too. I hope that it's clear that the renovation of the house is a continuation. It's, it's to continue Ruth's life and work mm -hmm. through other people. Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. I probably don't need the microphone, but I will. Okay. Hi, Bianca. I just want to say I love the animation throughout it. My son is an animator, and... It just added just another layer, another depth, and uh, it was quite beautiful. And uh, I just really appreciate your fervor. I'm a grandmother, and you know, I, I said to my friend at the end, I feel like a slacker, <laughs> you know, after seeing Ruth and this wonderful film. So, and, and also, thank you, Nora. Um, it's a beautiful film, but Bianca, just great job, and you're just a wonderful granddaughter, <laughs> oh. and a poet and an artist yourself. Thank you. Thank you. I, it's funny because being in White River, I remember I took a class at the comics um, school here uh, in an, 2D animation, and it was like I was like such a bad student. I like couldn't get it. It was so hard. I was having such a hard time with it. Um, I actually was fine how I figured out how to do animation. I'd been playing with film for like ever. Um, just doing basically stop animation as what exactly what it looked like. Um, but I spent a lot of time freaking out about not being able to do like traditional 2D animation and like wanting to do it and trying to do it and you know, trying lots of different things, Nora and I going back and forth about what was working and what wasn't. Um, spending like hours on something that was like, Nora's like, this is only half a minute long. <laughs> like, no. Um, but actually, you know, as torturous as it was for me in my head, uh, I'm so glad I did it um, because I just had so much fun watching it in the end and um, and just playing with different things and um, yeah, it was really it was really fun to do. Um, yeah, that's all. Oh. <laughs> um, I, I love the film so much. I've seen a couple versions of it. It's Robin, Nora. And um, so touching in terms of capturing not just a love of poetry, but a love of place and family. It makes me very emotional. Um, but I just, Bianca, I wanted to hear more about the Ruth Stone House and share how anyone and everyone can get involved, either by supporting the project or, or coming and spending time in the house. Absolutely, yeah. We're doing a lot of stuff right now um, beyond the renovations, which require um, us to finish our capital campaign. So we are doing uh, a capital campaign to finish funds so we can actually finish the renovations on the house itself, which, you, as you can see, needs a lot of work. Um, but the Roostone House also does. We have online classes. We have in-person classes, almost always based around poetry. Um, and we do a podcast, and we have newsletters. We have an online magazine called Iterant, which has just been so great, and we have so many great poets in it. Uh, and it comes out um, once every four months or so. Uh, so you can find out all that at uh, ruthstonehouse.org and uh, sign up for our mailing list and find out all the things we're doing because we're constantly unfolding programming. Last summer, we did our first week-long residency because the house, the Rousseau house isn't ready. We did it down the road at the uh, a bed and breakfast called Blueberry Hill Inn, which is really a beautiful space, beautiful property, basically what we want to do with the Rousseau house in the end. So it was a good, tr you know, a good stand-in for now. Um, and we had 20 people come stay for the week, take a workshop, 
we had readings at night. It was really, 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 really a poetry vacation paradise, I have to say. We're doing another one this summer, so um, yeah, definitely check it out. Um, and then we have lots of resources to find out about Restone's poetry and, and things like that too on there. So, and we also do outreach to schools in the community. So if you want us to come talk about poetry in a classroom and things like that, we'll, we, we really believe in that, so. How many of uh, Ruth's books are in print now? Um, I think there's 12. Um, oh, in print, no, you're right. Uh, six, maybe? Um, the newest one is The Essential Restone, which I edited and it came out last year. And it's great because it's a small volume and it's like all uh, poems from the beginning to the end of her uh, career. And um, you know, the, hopefully The Collected will be coming out within the next five years. And um, her main publisher now is Copper Canyon Press and they, they have about five books right now um, of hers, so. Nora, I, I just want to say what a wonderful film I thought it was. I kept, I kept being awed by how you were telling the story and showing things. I'm not, I'm not a film critic, you know, I'm not somebody who thinks about all this, how this is made, but it just flowed and it was so moving. Thank you. <laughs> it's got a good review. Sorry, we had a question on this side of the house. Is that person still here? Nope. Maybe not. Okay. Laura, when you, we were watching, I, I like the, uh, the letterpress, uh, the look of, of the word, and also you rotated the page slightly for one of the poems. I thought that was wonderful. It fit with everything you put together. Uh, can you turn the microphone? Uh, he didn't want it. <laughs> Just talking. Yeah, we are recording, so we would like yeah. it if people use the microphone. So talking about the, the page, seeing, seeing sometimes the poems on the page. Yeah, tilted a little bit. Yep. Thanks. Yep, there's a question. Oh, I wanted oh. to say also that we do, we have a full running letterpress studio in the Russo House now. So that's, that's what you got a little glimpse of that at the end, but that's another thing we do there. Um, hi, thank you so much. I was really moved by the film and it was really emotional for me as well. Um, it's Allison, Nora. Um, I really appreciated how in the narrative it was, you know, she talked about, you talked about how she didn't go to college and um, she lived uh, basically in poverty and this, you said that the donations of this view screening are going towards people who don't have access to either media or, or um, access to sort of a creative outlet. And I was wondering if you could talk about uh, a little bit more about that programming and, and like who in the community will be served, um, if you know that by now, or, or anything basically about, about that as it relates to Ruth um, or as it relates to uh, the community in this area. Well, Patty Hernandez, you know her program called Telling My Story. So she is running, is Patty still here? Uh, you're, you're there, okay. So you should talk with Patty Hernandez more about that. What I know is that this winter and spring, they're going to CATV, is partnering with Patty and telling my story, her program, to put cameras and editing equipment into the hands of a group of unsheltered people from the area. There was a program this summer, telling my story, that already did that, but without film, without filming. So the idea is for that community to tell, make their own films, tell their own story on film rather than have us come in and do it for them. That, that's the idea. Um, Samantha or Patty, do you want to give more information about it? Patty? Well, it's, it, it's still, we're still working on it, right? Uh, I, was, I, I actually want to say that the, the 
the movie was so connected with, <laughs> with telling my story in many ways and what we're trying to do. Um, of course, the poetry, powerful and beautiful, but the community, the community, that space of community that was built on an ongoing basis, that was to me a very powerful component to all of this and how people like, keep, want to keep building that, right? I mean, th this renovation, it's like a, it's symbolic of that. Let's, how do we keep building community? So anyway, that's what CATV pretty much wants to, the idea of how, and, and telling my story, how we can collaborate in order to bring what I call unlike communities together in many ways and how we can collaborate and how we can relate to one another, not in a, in a lineal way, but in a, in a more collaborative way. We can all contribute to something else and we can envision something different. I guess, I don't know if that helps. <laughs> Does that help, Allison? Does it Samantha, would you like to add anything? Yeah, just to tag on to Patty's comments, just uh, speaking on the CATV side, we're really looking forward to partnering with Patty and bringing different groups together to become more conscious of the way that the camera interacts with the storytelling process and those relationships. So, but there's somebody here with a question, so I'm gonna pass this on and then I think we're just about ready to wrap up. I just know, wanted to know when we could see this film again. <laughs> Oh. Or what is the avenue to look yeah. through? Well, let's see. The Vermont Humanities Council is going to be showing it twice in March. If you look at the Vermont Humanities newsletter, you'll see it. It's it, They're showing it in Manchester and in St. Johnsbury. Um, what else? Oh, oh uh, let's see. The, the, the um, next stage in Putney is doing it. Yeah, so next stage in Putney is April, no, April 1st? And, and yeah, and the Latches, we don't know yet. January. In January, we hope. And then there's a screening in um, Waterville, Maine, in December at, at Railroad Square. The New Jersey Film Festival is showing it in, at the end of January. Um, so, you know, we're collecting a bunch of scre screenings now, and so if you have any ideas of who might show it, please let me know or Chard or Bianca. There are some postcards out on the table by the, by the books, and if you want to grab a postcard and send it to someone and say, hey, you know, maybe you want to show this film, um, we, at some point, we'll want to show it on television, you know, probably some kind of PBS kind of thing, certainly Vermont, probably Maine, maybe national PBS. It would be fantastic if we could get national PBS. That's extremely challenging and hard to do. So Nora's leaving out the fact that it was shown at the International Boston International Film Festival about a month ago and was chosen as one of the five best films at that festival. <laughs> and, um, and is being aired, I don't know if it's aired already, on WGBH in Boston. Well, well wait a minute. I should, <laughs> let me clarify that. So WGBH selected it as one of the five films to stream uh, they didn't, they haven't shown it yet, but hopefully they will. And, and streaming, yes, well, of course. The thing about streaming is you have to be very careful in terms of the chronology because uh, it, it's hard to get distribution if, you, if you're, you've already streamed it. So we can't stream it until we have heard from some of the you know, like like probably PBS and uh, I don't know, my friend Ken Eisen at Waterville sent it to the guy who runs, who programs the film forum in New York, which would be incredible if they showed it, you know. So, um, well that's something that you could do if you, if you like the film, grab a postcard and send it to someone that has some power in terms of, uh, 
distribution. I mean, it's always a challenge, so. And also, I just wanted to say, I know you're just like getting off a tangent on like film distribution, but like, uh, I just want to impart too that like how amazing it was that how much poetry you put in and people reading poetry out loud. And like, I think Ruth's story is really interesting and we always appreciate poets like in the context of their lives, you know, just like Sylvia Plath or something. Um, but that really at the core of it all is is her incredible way with words. And I just hope that everybody came out of this, watching this with a sense of poetry, even if they didn't like any poetry before, a better sense of poetry and love of poetry. I, I, yeah, that's a good sign, yeah. And I think that's a fine note to go out on. I wanna yeah. thank Bianca, Nora, Tyler, and Chard for their time and for their wonderful movie. Thank you so much. Oh, and much. we have refreshments in the lobby, oh, yes. so hang around. Meet the filmmakers if you haven't met them already. Ah. Thank you, Craig.